Hello, Marlo Kelly. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? In front of me, I have one of our rising stars for the CGA 2021. Fantastic. And I hear you've been working nonstop as well. Yeah, <laughs> it has been a bit um, hectic. I'm currently in Queensland um, in Brisbane filming Joe Exotic. Okay. Talk us through um, talk us through that experience. So obviously we're you know in this world at the moment of everything being quite crazy, and here you are doing a, an amazing project. So. Yeah, um, it. I mean, it came after you know a long period of time of there being no work going on um, because of obviously the pandemic and all that sort of stuff, and it was it was such a delight and a treat to get a job like this that is so lighthearted and fun and has mm. such, you know, a great group of people around it stepping onto set every day with um, Kate McKinnon and Carl. Yeah. And What's Jonathan it like working with the Americans? Things. Like, is it like oh. your A game every day? Like, what's yeah. the preparation <laughs> like? I, you know, is there a lot of changes too with scripts per day? You know, like, what's the pressure like? Um, I think... They are all so brilliant at what they do and it's really inspiring and, but they're all incredibly nice people. So it, mm. it doesn't feel pressure filled. It just feels like yeah. a space where you get to create and play together. And, um, and they're open to that. Hey? Like they're, re- yeah. they're embracive. Incredibly. Yeah. yeah. That's good. I was talking Very to collaborative. Yeah. I was talking to your agent too. And it's, and it was, you know, it was great because I've, you know, I've been following you too for for some time, and you know, you come across because agents always ring, and and they're they're amazing because they're such giving, wonderful people, and they let us know what you're up to, what you're doing next, mm-hmm. and I guess for you, it's about, you know, that creative process for you. What's it like having a team? You know, you're going to you for you example, you got an Australian team and also a US team. Mm-hmm. So uh, when you all get together, what's what's that like when a, a project comes to you? Um, I think one of the most fortunate things that's happened for me is that I have been lucky enough to create a team that all has the same um, ideals and expectations and uh, same taste. Mm -hmm. So when we get talking, it's, we get really excited. You know, we feel like we're creating something together. We're working. When you say same taste, do you mean like, you, you've got a vision in mind for yourself of what, what roles you want to take on and, and your path ahead of you. Is that what you mean? Uh, yeah, that. Mm. And also that, you know, we like the same kind of writing and uh-huh. the same sorts of directors and those sorts of things. So it's nice as well because we both get to, you know, get excited about projects but then mm. also talk to each other about the different books that we're reading and yeah. all this sort of stuff and geek out over those kinds of things just as friends, not just mm-hmm. colleagues. Right. And what what is your preparation then for a role, going into a role, that process, that personal time you do? Um, so I, for every role it changes, I think. I don't think there's any, there's no... I think, you know, because every character is different, it's always going to be a different process. Yeah. Um, there's no one hard and fast way mm. um, of creating a personal, personal sense of connection with a character, I don't think. But a few things I've, you know, noticed over the years that I constantly return to is I, I journal a lot for characters. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of writing. Um, and I also, I, I tend to read books around the same as subject matter or experiences as the characters to kind of uh, gain sort of gain insight through that through some kind mm. of osmosis and let it all kind of happen pull away in the background you know and then when it gets time to actually like breaking down the script and doing the work there's a whole extra layer that's built back there and when so you're given, obviously, I guess for these, like, um, uh, like your your body of work's quite amazing too because you've gone from Australian TV yeah. to America and now you're back here doing an American show in Australia as well. So it's yeah. kind of cool. Um, I guess I would just want to hear a little bit more on 
on what that's been like for you the past few years, that growth? Um, completely unexpected and mm. really exciting uh, and very fulfilling. Um, I, I mean, the first job I ever really did was Home and Away here in Australia. And I, I never thought I'd be on a show like that, like that. I, I, when that happened, I was like, well, I've peaked. I can, I'm done, you know? Yeah. And then, um, and then moving on to Dare Me, which was an American TV show um, that I did, that was, that is, still is one of the, the funnest experiences I've ever had. Was that? That was amazing. Um, I think because the, I, I just loved the character that I was playing. She was mm -hmm. really sort of mercurial and feisty and um, she was very much her own person, which I really loved. And also because the, it was just, you know, it was just a team of incredible women all these mm -hmm. amazing female directors, DOPs, all the showrunners were women. It was based off an amazing book. And then I was working with like 15 girls on a cheer team every day. Wow. And so we just, it was just a really beautiful community. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I guess too, you know, when we're talking a little bit earlier too, it was, I loved how you said to me that even though you were working on a show, you were still prepping and doing classes, doing accent work, I, and your drive for the craft and the work was really, I, I loved it. I responded so well to it. It's like, yeah, you're on set and, you know, working, you know, quite often, especially back in Home and Away, but then you're crafting and, you know, just just working on, I loved how you said your accent, knowing that these other jobs were coming your way. It's like, is there a little part of you knowing that, yeah, I've got to work on this accent because this is coming to me. Like, did you have a niggle, like, inside think, you thinking this is where I'm going or is this a part of your path? Um, I, I think I think, I think think so, but I think also there is just an expectation that as an Australian you need to be able to do a good American accent because there's just so much content being made over there. And I think same with a good British accent. Like, they feel like basic necessities, you mm. know, as an Australian actor. Um, but I did while I was, yeah, while I was on Home and Away, I was doing classes still every week and I was doing dialect coaching and those are things I still do. I always go back to class between jobs. I, mm. and I always try and go to different sorts of classes because I think it's really important to try lots of different things. Um, particularly after you've just been working on something for a long time to sort of test yourself and, um, I think shock your system. Give yourself a bit of a fright. I think it's really good for you. And that's what excites me about you. Oh, thank that, you. <laughs> you know, that that work drive. Uh, because a lot of actors, you know, and I guess people in general, we do get complacent once we've kind of hit a level. Mm. But you, you know, you demonstrate that, yeah, I'm there, but I'm going further. Oh, thank you. You that's know, right. and it, that, that's good to, it's good to know. And, it, and you know, that, that's demonstrating now because you're being cast and it's quite a large major series. Yeah. And <laughs> ten, ten months work ahead of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After this I'm going on to a project in England. Um, Are we allowed to hear a little bit or? Yeah, it's, yeah. it was just announced the other day. So it's um, a Netflix series called The Three Body Problem which is being show, the showrunners are uh, the creators of Game of Thrones. Wow. Um, Benioff and Weiss yeah. and um, Alexander Wu is also from, he was the, he's from True Blood. He's also one of the producers and showrunners, which is amazing. So what, Marla, what's, what's that process like? You know, like you're on Joe Exotic now and, and obviously you've got, you know, your team, they're putting this in front of you. So you do your self tape, of course, or were you able to, was it a Zoom? How, how did that unfold? So I actually auditioned for them at the same time. I think they were like two days apart or something. Um, and for the job in the UK for Three Body Problem, that uh, they, they sent, they sent for jobs like that, they can be a bit secretive and they send through yeah. fake scenes uh -huh. and they don't give you any context. They don't tell you anything about the character. 
you kind of get this opportunity to just Mm. create whatever it is that you can do, um, which I really love. I think it's really exciting um, because you kind of get to put your stamp on it Mm. before anyone else can get in there. Um, So I did that and then... And that was even in my Australian accent at that point in time. And then they sent in another, they got me to do another scene as a callback. And then we jumped on a Zoom call and we chatted and that was it. It was actually a really simple process, um, surprisingly. Wow. So they fell in love with you straight away, honey. (laughs) I don't know. I've seen it again. (laughs) You've done your your self-tape at home, obviously, or video. Did you get direction on that or was that just still, like you're saying, just your own interpretation and going from there? Yeah, there was there was no direction. For, right. for that particular project, there was none, which was quite yeah. surprising. Prideful for an actor to go through that, isn't it? Like were you yeah. aware that it was such a large project coming your way? No, no, so no I, didn't, I didn't know anything. And I also, when I then went and had the Zoom call with them, I mm. I thought that there was going to be like six more rounds of auditions after that. Okay. I didn't realise that I had essentially booked the job. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah, I was expecting to come into the call and receive a whole lot of notes and then go away and, and do it again. Oh, yeah. But, or even yeah. have a director's sort of read and run through. Yeah, it, right? yeah, as you yeah. normally would, yeah. Gee, that's good. What's that feel like inside for you? Does that, like, like tick those boxes of accomplishment and, and life goals? <laughs> or you just, this is you. This is how um, it be. It definitely, uh, it, it was incredibly exciting, you mm. know, but it was also terrifying because my brain was like, they've made a mistake. Um, <laughs> everyone, you know, like something's yeah, going wrong. Self-sabotage comes through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, they, they haven't figured out that we still have to do a whole lot more other stuff before they can bring me on to do this job. Like, yeah, there's, yeah. Um, but no, it was, it was pretty. So you take off now for 10, when do you leave next year or? No, I, I, I leave next week. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I finish this and then I go the next, the next day. We were in November now in, uh, in 21. So that's good. So yeah. we've got to keep an eye on you and, and your progress. And any little tips, I guess, for, you know, other actors out there that are, I guess, you, you looking back and, you know, help guide them. Mm. I guess we all get a little bit worried at times that we, you know, like I was even talking to an actor today, like she's done like a few days on a project and it's like, what next? You know, it's like what happens in that downtime? I personally think the best thing to do is there's a, a saying which I really like, which is um, luck is lost on the lucky who aren't prepared for luck. Mm. And so I think there is something really important about, you know, sort of staying audition fit during that downtime, during that period of time. And I don't even necessarily mean that in regards to like continuing acting or going to class, even though I I think they are great things to do. I also mean as in just keep yourself busy in any way, keep your mind interested, stay active, do stuff that excites you because I do think that that will then feed back into your work because then you're not stepping into the auditions with the belief that that's the be all and end all and that if you don't get it, you have nothing else going on. Yeah, how do you throw that? How have you personally worked through the reject? Through the rejection? Yeah. Um, I think... By recognising that there is so much of it that you just cannot control mm-hmm. and that at the end of the day, it's it's not really about you, you know. It's, um, it's yeah, I, th- I think it's just about, rec- yeah, recognising that you want them to make the best project possible. Mm-hmm. And if that doesn't mean that you're the right person, then that's okay. Yeah. That's and I've always line. found yeah. that the auditions that I do best at are when I have gone in with the genuine mindset that I love the project so much that I don't care if it's not me. 
mm-hmm. because I just want them to get the right person. Wow. Um, I guess that's what they've seen in you too on this no- next project because you do radiate such a cool vibe, you know, as oh, well. Yeah. And you've got such a glow and a, and a really centered feeling. So it's, oh, um, it's all automatically there for you, So which is great. So I can see why you love a challenge. As well, <laughs> with, the, with the character, you know, and, love a come like <laughs> and look well done on your achievements. It's it's also um, great to see that you know Queensland in particular too was very busy during um, the past couple of months. You know this year too, and yeah. the opportunities have you know come about for for actors. It's been so incredible. Oh, it's fantastic yeah. that there's yeah. so much going on here. So did you have formal training or did you, is it a natural thing that you feel you've got? Um, So I didn't go to drama school. I had, I thought that I would. So I always Mm. wanted to be an actor. There wasn't anything else that I had planned to do with my life. Um, And when I was in high school, I did a lot of theatre. And then I, yeah, I was planning to go to drama school. And when I was in my final year of school, um, my agent, Sophie German, went to a play that I was in by chance and she asked if I wanted to sign with her. And I, I know said, she told me. She yes. said she went there. You know, it was just one of those times in the world where it was there was a magnetic energy. <laughs> she's there watching you and she's gone, I need to know her. <laughs> it was the best day of my life. It was mm-hmm. hands down the best day so of my life. Did she come up to you afterwards and go, here's my card or what's that exchange? No, she found my, I think she found my mum, which I also think is really funny because my mum and I look so similar that you can tell who my mum is. (laughs) You know what I mean? Right. Um, (laughs) That's my mum. I'm going going in, going to attack. Yeah. And um, they set it up and I went into her offices and and Mm -hmm. had a meeting. Um, And part of that whole conversation was she essentially was like, give me a year don't go to drama school, give me one year because her attitude was don't fix what's not broke. Um, And I was like, okay, I don't know what else to do, but sure. Um, And so we did. And then I just, I very fortunately booked work. I booked home and away quite quickly after that. So my training was that being on set. The work ready. Yeah. You've learned from being on the job. Yeah. And too, with that show, it's quite fast paced. It's turning over, you're on the spot. It's, you know, so you learn yeah. quickly. You learn quickly. And also one of the mm-hmm. great things that they do is they have drama coaches on set and you can see them as much as you want. Uh, and I really took advantage of that. And also if you wanted to, you could go and watch your footage and I would go all of my filming days and I would watch yeah. every piece of footage that I was in um, and I had done a class with um, Dave Newman around that time. Beautiful. And one of the things yeah. that stood out to me during those classes was he said, when you watch back your footage, you have to put on your producer's brain. You have to put yeah. on your producer's brain. Right. You cannot look Take at yourself it. yourself out of it. Okay. Yeah. And I think having spoken to him about that around that period of time, going into the home and away offices and watching the footage, I was able to, take it on and deconstruct it and mm. learn from what I was doing rather than, you know, self-sabotage and worry yeah. about my appearance or whatever. Which we do. Which we do. The totally yeah. natural thing to do. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I love that. Doing the separation. What a great tip for everyone. Yeah. yeah. I think it's really, really mm. important and it's hard. If you get the opportunity to watch yeah. that back, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. that was such a, a benefit of that job. And I guess you can apply that technique to, to your self-tapes and working through, yes. and, you know, yeah. as well. So taking that objective. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. So, Marlo, look, I wish you all the best. I can see why everyone at the CGA has just nominated <laughs> you as one of our um, rising stars. Uh, very, uh, uh, you know, grateful to have this time with you. I wish you all the best. And we're all supporting you as well. So, and good luck overseas. All right. Thank you.